Hey there, tennis fans. I'm Grace Carter, and this is Tennis Now, presented by Tennis Express. Tennis Express, order today, and it ships today. The 2020 Australian Open is over and done, and what a two weeks it was. Some marathon matches really surprised us. We had some record races. We also saw a few disappointments. But this time around, we thought we would take a look at the things that surprised us the most, starting with Nick Kyrgios. Now, Nick started this season with a six-month probation hanging over his head, but he made his home fans proud with a fourth-round run and by showing compassion for his nation under fire. Nick pledged $200 for every ace he hit during the Aussie summer season, with that money going for the brush fire relief. And he also inspired the tournament's event called Rally for Relief, which ended up raising $5 million. Seems playing for a cause bigger than himself really helped Nick focus, and he delivered an inspired performance. As for Nick, he says he feels like he is making some progress as a human. Good for him. Next up, we were very surprised when Dominic Team fired his coach Thomas Mooster right in the middle of the tournament. Didn't seem to bother him, though. He had hired Mooster at the end of last season, specifically to help him get further in the Grand Slams. Apparently, though, it didn't work out. But the guy's been playing great. He's made it twice to the French Open final and knocked off Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer at the ATP finals. But it seems there was a little bit of a personality clash. However, head coach Nicholas Massou is still on the job. Our third surprise came from a couple of Hall of Famers, Martina Navratilova and John McEnroe, who joined forces in a surprise on-court protest. The day after Tennis Australia recognized the 50th anniversary of Margaret Court's 1970 Grand Slam, the two unveiled a banner that read Yvonne Goolagong Arena, advocating for the tournament to rename the Margaret Court Arena because they don't like her views on same-sex marriage. The 77-year-old Court is a Christian Pentecostal minister in Perth, Australia, and in the past has claimed that pro tennis is full of lesbians. She says critics are bullying her in trying to diminish her legacy over her religious views. Now, in the end, the protest by Martina and Johnny Mac may have backfired a bit because it violated Tennis Australia's rules and they had to apologize. Next up, Garbina Muguruza. After a not so great 2019, Garbina Muguruza spent the off season climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Now, what a feat that was. And that challenge seems to have revitalized her. She reunited with coach Conchita Martinez and scaled a tough draw to reach her first Melbourne final. Along the way, she knocked off four top 30 opponents and made it into her fourth Grand Slam final. And even though she got a little tight at the end of her loss to Sofia Kennan, Garbina showed the world that she is a contender on all surfaces and is headed right back to the top. In fact, right now she sits at number 16 in the world. And how about Sasha Zarev? Now, he admitted his confidence was in tatters after the ATP Cup when he hit more double faults than he hit aces. Well, from the ashes of that awful start, Sasha rose to his first career Grand Slam semifinal in his 19th major. More importantly, his serve is back. He hit 72 aces in six matches. And finally, maybe the biggest surprise of all, Sophia Kennan. How about that? She proved that size doesn't matter when you have a huge heart. A very feisty Kennan toppled number one Ash Barty and then charged right through the final four games of that final match, stopping Garbina Muguruza in a dramatic three-set final. Imagine, it was only her 12th Grand Slam event. Pre-tournament, she was a 35 to 1 shot to take the title. Even more jaw-dropping, odds makers put a Kennan versus Muguruza final at a jaw-dropping 750 to 1 before that tournament began. But by the end, Sophia Kennan taught the tennis world a thing or two about desire and heart. And now she is the top ranked American woman sitting at number seven in the world, surpassing Serena Williams. And the 21 year old is the youngest Australian Open women's champion since Maria Sharapova in 2008. What a feat and how fun it was to watch. Thanks for watching everybody. I'm Grace Carter. We'll see you next time here on Tennis Now.